This video is permission to do the absolute bare minimum today. That's right. We got another buzzword, but we're now using the days of the week to name them. So we got bare minimum Monday. The other ones are still up in the air. I'm voting for try less Tuesday. Why am I here Wednesday? Thinking of quiet quitting Thursday and got replaced by AI Friday. What is bare minimum Monday? You might be wondering. The original idea comes from a TikTok from a creator named Marissa Joe. A bare minimum Monday in your late 20s. The mornings are hard. Your brain gives you 10 different reasons to go back to bed. It's warm. You're self-employed and nobody can stop you. Your first meeting isn't until noon, but you're trying to find the sweet spot between structure and flow. Now, what I think a lot of people don't realize or at least don't talk about is that the creator of Bare Minimum Monday, Marissa Joe here, is self-employed. She says, I was in corporate America for three years, spiraled into burnout so fast. Totally understandable. I get it. Didn't take me even three years. And then she became self-employed. And that's when she decided to create Bare Minimum Mondays and start her self-care rituals in the morning and just move at her own pace because the weekends don't go as planned. Sure, I understand that. And then the concept gets taken out of context and shown to different media agencies. This uh, TikToker uh, has come up with a phrase called Bare Minimum Monday. Which is really avoid burnout in life day. But again, we're probably going to get some version that excludes a bunch of important things like the self-employment. Uh, it's a practice where employees show up to work only to do the bare minimum on Monday, sometimes even starting their day late. Why does one have to go into work late on Monday? Because of self-care rituals. Well, that's because they left the part out about how she's self-employed. And then the original purpose and definition of it has just become blurred. Here's a LinkedIn post which shows an example of what I mean when I say this concept is being taken out of context. Call me old-fashioned, but those who take pride in their profession and frankly in themselves would recognize this as dishonest and unethical. What's causing the slacker victim mentality trend in our culture? So tired of reading about quiet quitting, bare minimum Monday. Would you like for your doctor to treat your health emergency with bare minimum effort because it's Monday? What about soldiers defending our security bus drivers driving your children? You see what I mean? This person doesn't understand and they end up making posts like this and then posts from these high-profile individuals get shared and people base their opinions off of that and write more articles. It honestly has nothing to do with Monday and everything to do with adjusting your schedule so that you don't burn out. Bare minimum Monday, devotees make the conscious decision to coast on the first day of the working week. A lot of people are doing this every single day of the week. Bare minimum Monday was started by a young lady of the Gen Z persuasion who said she spent three whole years in corporate and burned out. As a result, she started working for herself, but that didn't fix her issues. So she came up with putting in the absolute least possible effort every Monday for her employer. It seems like this person doesn't even understand what they're writing. Read this again with me. She started working for herself every Monday for her employer. And then it just continues on and on and on. Now, before we continue, we need to talk about today's sponsor. That's right. Your man got a sponsor here. And today's video is sponsored by Aura. Now, what is Aura, you might be wondering? Well, Aura has almost all the internet safety tools you need inside of one app. It has a VPN, a password manager, real-time credit and identity monitoring. It has internet parental controls and can even protect your device from malware. Now, you might be wondering why this sponsor Josh why aura well you might have noticed lately in a lot of my videos and across YouTube in general there's been someone in the comments section impersonating me using my profile picture using my name modified with special characters I'm talking about comments like these it's a serious problem on YouTube right now and whenever I hide them they just make a new account within hours just so everyone knows that's not me in the comments and now that this has become a serious issue I started to wonder what it would be like if someone actually stole my identity I should probably have that locked in some way and the fact that I've done YouTube this long without this becoming a real problem yet was a big hint to me that I should do something about it. So I went online and I used Aura service and what I found out about myself was actually pretty surprising. So this is just the identity page on Aura and you can see if people have tried to use your information to open new accounts and stuff. You can also see what public records there are on you as well as who sold your personal data and it can also give you a heads up if your accounts have been compromised in a data breach. Apparently my information has been sold to a whole bunch of data brokers. Just a few of my accounts needed some immediate attention, but Aura makes it easy with this Chrome extension. And on a lot of websites, if it detects your password being weak, you click the button and it will try and automatically change it to a strong password and save it in the Aura app. Turns out my identity hasn't been stolen and now it won't be, thanks to Aura. So if you're interested in how Aura could help keep you safer on the internet, check out my link below, aura.com slash fluke, or scan the little QR code for a two week free trial and see if any of your personal information has been leaked online. Latest office trend eases into the work week by doing less, and it's called Bare Minimum Mondays. It's not about slacking here, it's about self-care. Marissa Jo Mays came up with a solution to the dreaded start of the work week. This video is permission to do the absolute bare minimum today. Digital creator and startup co-founder practices Bare Minimum Mondays. 
You used to hate Mondays, but now you love them. From her home in Phoenix, Mays keeps the first two hours of her Monday free and schedules only three tasks for the day. Yeah, because you're self-employed and you can make your own schedule. The concept of having self-care and not overdoing it on Mondays where you feel stressed out, sure, I absolutely get it. But it's different coming from a self-employed person. If you're playing the corporate game, you're already doing bare minimum Mondays, let's be real. You'd make a to-do list that was way too long thinking you could overachieve your way out of the stress, but you never did. Mays promoted the concept with TikTok videos and they went viral. People relate to the stress that I'm describing. Do they ever stop and think, hey, well, she's self-employed and she can easily, you know, just change her schedule around. I would love for employees to have that sort of control and that's why I promote remote work. That's why I'm a huge fan of remote because it gives you flexibility, at least usually gives you flexibility and more freedom, autonomy over your schedule. But for people that don't have those sorts of jobs like bare minimum Mondays is the latest strategy to combat ever increasing work burnout now workers are experimenting more with boundaries now I'd say in most other articles and videos about bare minimum Monday or CEOs writing about it on LinkedIn they always leave out the part where Marissa Joe apparently has said while the bare minimum approach isn't possible for all workers Mays says there are ways everyone can improve their day she acknowledges it won't work for everyone but everyone can try and improve their day that part is conveniently left out and I believe it's on purpose because then it wouldn't be as polarizing, you know? It's either the media leaves that out on purpose or her videos that exploded left that out. Again, this entire concept isn't as polarizing if you understand that it comes from someone who's self-employed that sets their own schedule and takes time for self-care, but then the media presents it as if everyone is going to do it. Like it's just- Spirit of bare minimum Monday. I don't hate this. just do the toss from this here. This is kind of nice. Yeah, it is. Uh, now the bare minimum is- every day. It's bare minimum every day. Not gonna work tomorrow. We this is actually kind of funny, but it's also kind of messed up. Up because this is such an American stigma. If you have time to lean, you have time to clean, and sitting at work, especially if you're in like a customer service position, is kind of just equated with laziness here in the United States. But in Europe, if you have a job where you're required to stand all day, where you could sit and it wouldn't really make a difference, well, then you can sit. I get the joke, but also it's kind of messed up. Well, a new TikTok trend encourages easing into the work week by doing less. Do you see how the media describes it and how it's different from the original TikTok videos that it comes from. This is called Bare Minimum Monday. And as Michael George explains, it's not about slacking. This is about self-care. I'm all for self-care, but you have to have the sort of job where you can make those decisions and have that control. Workers typically wield greater leverage over an employer since workers have more latitude to seek a job elsewhere. I was in corporate America for three years, spiraled into burnout so fast. It only took me to age 25 to wind up with several health issues. Like I was in a bad place. Here's the thing. People that like their jobs in corporate and have been doing it for a long time and don't want to be self-employed are going to laugh. Oh, it only took you three years to burn out? Ha, millennial. And that's the response that she is getting. Um, and then she became self-employed. Quitting her job to check out self-employment, but that didn't fix her burnout. I didn't necessarily have a boss problem. I had a hustle culture problem. So there you go. She overworked herself and has decided to now slow it down on Mondays. There's two different perspectives here that aren't being separated or talked about. There's the employee's perspective of bare minimum Monday, and then there's the self-employed person's perspective of bare minimum Monday, and they're being confused for the same thing. But whether or not you're an entrepreneur, you can work endlessly into burnout. But when you're an entrepreneur, it's easier to step back away from that because you're in control of that. Employees can only do so much. They can only change their schedule. They can only add so much self-care routine that's just how it is. One morning I woke up and audibly gave myself permission. You have permission to do the absolute bare minimum today. Yeah, you do because you're self-employed. Three million TikTok likes later, bare minimum Monday has taken off with burnt out employees giving MJ's concept to go. Sometimes doing the bare minimum is okay. It's what the word literally means. The minimum of what's acceptable, people will reject it because they have yet to investigate their relationship to productivity. Oh my god, why don't you just say bare minimum is normally used in a stigmatizing way to indicate that you're doing less than the minimum. Some tips for your own bare minimum Monday, make a to-do list. And if an item doesn't have immediate consequences today, then that's tomorrow's problem. The actual topic that bare minimum Monday 
is addressing is employee burnout. Hey, take a step back if you're overworking yourself and slow it down. Nothing to do with the bare minimum on Monday. It's a person that worked themselves into burnout, became self-employed, and continued to work themselves into burnout, decided, hey, maybe I should take a step back on Mondays. Great. I'm all about self-care. But when you create words like this, you're just going to get articles written about you taken out of context. And maybe that was your goal. And if that was the case, marketing genius, more points to you. So here's a LinkedIn post from a CEO giving his take on a few of these buzzwords. And when you read it, you can see that once again, these are taken out of context. It's interesting to observe that many people today express a desire for higher pay while simultaneously advocating for working less. Bro, businesses want more productivity for less pay every single day. That is your job as a CEO and employees are just on the opposite side of that. Now the next thing here is with trends like the four work week, bare minimum Monday and quiet quitting gaining traction, on the surface these two objectives seem to contradict each other, don't they? It always seems to boil down to less days per week means less productivity, which just isn't true. There are entire industries that work 48 hours in two days. Y'all ever heard of firefighters? Some of them work two 24-hour shifts back to back, and I don't think anyone would say they're not working hard enough because they only work two days a week. Yet, we get it from these CEOs all the time. Once again, he lists bare minimum Monday with quiet quitting gaining traction. It's literally just doing your job duties. Everyone's happy. Four-day work week doesn't mean less work. As we all know, achieving a healthy work-life balance is important, but we must also remember that hard work and dedication have always been essential ingredients for success. This is such a CEO cliche. Let's celebrate the spirit of working hard while also seeking a balanced lifestyle. That's actually the point of most of these buzzwords, by the way. Quiet quitting. Whole point is to just do your job, go home, remember you have a life. Bare minimum Monday. Completely taken out of context by everyone. Don't burn yourself out. Four-day work week. Just be more productive in less days. Ta-da! That's all about creating work-life balance. We get all this nonsense on LinkedIn of a bunch of people having no idea what they're actually talking about. And that's why this channel exists, to cut through that corporate nonsense. So, if you enjoyed this video and you enjoyed the content, do me a favor, click that like button, click that subscribe button, leave a comment, let me know what you think, and support the people who support me. Check out my link in the description, aura.com slash fluke, or you can scan this little QR code and you get two weeks free. Thanks so much, I hope everyone's doing well, and I'll see you in the next one.